Hello friends. Welcome to Petra Proficient. This video is about secondary well control. Thank you for watching the video. We are committed to bring forth more videos to enrich your knowledge. Please support us by subscribing to the channel and benefit from the videos. Don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified about a new video. Thank you. So, what is secondary well control? When primary well control fails, it causes an influx of reservoir fluids into the well bore. This is a highly undesired situation and is also called a kick, in oil field terminology. This situation needs equipment like blow out preventer to remove the influx out, and control the well. BOPs must be used with specific procedures, also called well kill procedures. These procedures will be discussed in the later part of the video. So do watch till the end. This is a typical BOP stack used on a land or shallow water drilling units. Typically, two or three BOPs are used in tandem to provide redundancy, backup, and to be able to shut the well in different operational scenarios. Two main categories of blowout preventers are RAM BOP and annular BOP. BOP stacks frequently utilize both types of BOPs. The annular BOP closes around any pipe diameter, and, can even close the well fully without any pipe or tubular in the hole. The RAM BOP was invented by James Abercrombie and Harry S. Cameron in 1922. The original design was a device with T-shaped housing threaded to screw on top of casing. The closing mechanism was simple with two opposite gates slash valves on each side of the housing. The new generation BOPs are hydraulically operated, and can be closed within seconds. Typically, they range from £5,000 per square inch to £15,000 per square inch, service pressure. In the event of an indication of a kick, BOPs need to be closed immediately to minimize the size of influx. The industry has defined the process of closing the BOP, this is called shut-in procedure. The two shut-in procedures are hard shut-in and soft shut-in. The sequence of operations for the two procedures is different and is listed here. The illustration shows closing of pipe ram against a drill pipe.
In summary, for soft shut-in, the choke is open while drilling and tripping. And, for hard shut-in, the choke is closed while drilling and tripping. After the well is shut in, what next? The driller records shut in drill pipe pressure, or SIDPP, and shut in casing pressure, or SICP, and prepares to kill the well. In this illustration, we can see that a well has been shut in and shut in drill pipe pressure and shut in casing pressure have been noted. The formation pressure can be calculated using shut in drill pipe pressure from the given mathematical equation. After the pressures are recorded, the driller prepares a kill sheet with all the calculations required to kill the well. Calculations include the mud density required for kill fluid, pressure and circulation rate, and the time and strokes required to kill the well. The two common well control procedures are, driller's method, and, weight and weight method. Each method has its own advantages and disadvantages. We will see the two methods, and procedures, in the following section. So do watch until the end. Let's see this illustration for driller's method of well kill procedure. The smaller leg in the illustration represents the drill pipe, and, the bigger leg represents annulus. The diagram shows a gas kick and the well is shut in. The driller records the initial shut-in drill pipe pressure and shut-in casing pressure. The pressure needs to be stabilized before the final readings are recorded. After recording the SIDPP and SICP, the driller initiates the first circulation which is with the original mud that is present in the well to circulate the influx out. At the end of first circulation, the influx is out of hole and, at this stage, SICP equals SIDPP, to confirm that the kick has been circulated out and no more gas is in the well. At this point, the driller lines up to circulate the kill mud. In weight and weight method, normally, only one circulation is needed to kill the well. Thank you for watching. Please do leave your comment for us to know your feedback, and it will help us to prepare more educational videos for all of you.